Hello everyone, welcome to Dot Dot Toys. In today's video, we are going to learn facts about Frederick Douglass. We will learn who he was and what his work did to help shape America and the world around him. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification so you can find out each time we add a new video to help you learn and have fun. So if you're ready to learn some facts about Frederick Douglass that you can share with your friends, family, and even your teachers, let's get going. Frederick Douglass was born near Hillsborough, Maryland in February of 1818. He was born to a white father and a slave mother. He was born into slavery and was separated from his mother when he was just a baby. Douglas never knew his father and was moved to different residences throughout Maryland during his childhood. At the age of 12, Frederick began receiving reading lessons from the wife of his master. Even though it was illegal to teach slaves to read, Frederick proved to be a quick study and was soon reading newspapers, magazines, and books. Through his reading of political journals, Frederick realized the horrors of slavery. He began to form views on human rights and how people should be treated. He also taught other slaves how to read, but this eventually got him into trouble. He was moved to another farm where he was beaten by the slave owner in an effort to break his spirit. However, this only strengthened Frederick's resolve to gain his freedom. In 1838, Frederick Douglass carefully planned his escape. He disguised himself as a sailor and carried papers that showed he was a free black seaman. On September 3, 1838, he boarded a train to the north. After 24 hours of travel, Douglass arrived in New York a free man. It was at this point that he married his first wife, Anna Murray, and took the last name Douglass. Douglas and Anna settled down in New Bedford, Massachusetts. At the age of 23, Frederick Douglass attended an abolitionist convention. Someone there asked him to give a speech about his life as a slave. He did so very brilliantly. He spoke clearly with dignity and power. Everything about him denied and made ridiculous the pro-slavery position that somehow African Americans were subservient to whites and were happiest when they were serving their white masters. As a result, Frederick Douglass was offered a full-time job as a lecturer for the Anti-Slavery Society. A few years later, in 1845, Frederick Douglass published a book, his autobiography. He wrote about his life as a slave and named his master in Baltimore. To avoid being captured by slave catchers, Douglas went on a two-year speaking tour in Great Britain. Many people in Britain were impressed by Frederick Douglass. They raised the money he needed to buy his freedom from slavery. In 1847, he returned to America as a free man. When he returned to America, Douglas published the North Star and four other abolitionist newspapers. As his reputation grew, Frederick Douglass became an advisor to Presidents Abraham Lincoln and Andrew Johnson. During the Civil War, which erupted in 1861 over the issue of slavery, black soldiers were given lesser pay and non-equal treatment. Douglass met with Lincoln to advocate on behalf of the soldiers. Douglass had two sons who served in the army, and he actively recruited African Americans to fight in the Civil War. Douglas, along with many others, spoke out for equal citizenship and the emancipation, which means freeing, of all slaves. After the war, Douglas fought for the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, as well as the 14th Amendment, which granted citizenship to those born in the United States as slaves, and the 15th Amendment, which granted voting rights to men of all color. Women would not gain the right to vote until the 19th Amendment in 1920. Sadly, Douglas's beloved wife, Anna, died in 1881 of a stroke. Several years later, 
Douglas remarried activist Helen Pitts. Helen was white, and their interracial marriage was widely criticized. But undeterred, Douglas and Helen continued traveling and advocating on behalf of equality and justice everywhere. Frederick Douglass died of a heart attack in 1895 at the age of 77, but his work to help the anti-slavery movement has not been forgotten and it never will be. Thanks so much for watching this video. We hope you learned something new today and can share it with somebody you know, maybe your mom, dad, sister, brother, friend, or even family or teachers. Show them how smart you're becoming. And Dot Dot Toys puts out two videos a week to help you learn and have fun at the same time. So thanks so much for watching, and if you learned something new today, smash that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next video. Bye.